good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told out of voice of radio. So today, we need to go and take a look at a new character card. A kind of fun looking new character card. One that was revealed by the folks over at Wreck and Rule. It's Roadbuster. Roadbuster is a wrecker. It's another super rare card, so you know, that sounds good. And it does a little bit of cheeky damage, which means I am immediately in. Oh yeah, and as a fun little side note, we've also got a lovely stratagem. More on that in a moment. So Roadbuster then, what do we see? Well, first of all, we see a, an 11 star character, which is quite a lot, especially when I've already told you we're going to have a stratagem, so it's only going to go up from here. And we have got good stats, to be fair. Health of 14 is good. Attack of 5 or 6 is decent or good, and defensive 2 or 3 is alright, or pretty gosh darn good. So we do love the stats, although it must be pointed out that they're not phenomenal for an 11 star. And while we're here, it's just a wrecker and a leader. It's not ranged or specialist or melee or any of that. It's not a truck or a tank or a car or a plane or a beast or a dinobot or any of that. The only traits that it actually gets are Leader and Wrecker. Which means it really doesn't have a lot of extra tricks. Yeah, Matrix of Leadership. But honestly, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not loving it, ladies and gentlemen. I am not loving the lack of traits. But the skills here are pretty nice. Roadbuster, when you upgrade this with a weapon, you do one damage to an enemy. So you get a free zap. Anytime you go ahead and pop a weapon onto this, you get a free zap. You just drop one damage on one of your opponent's characters. And it does say an enemy, not a tapped enemy, or the defending enemy, or that doesn't say anything like that. So it does give you a free choice of who you attack, and that I do appreciate. So okay, I kind of like this skill. It means you're going to want to play a bunch of weapons, so you can cycle the weapons on regularly, but that's still pretty good. Flipping into alt mode where we get one more defense but one less attack. When you upgrade this with an armor, repair one damage from him. Now this is actually a little bit weak. Because doing one damage, right? Doing one damage is just a zap. It is a battle card. But healing one damage, meh. You're talking things like medic, but medic heals too. Okay, it doesn't have a battle icon, but um, yeah. I'm not loving the repairing one. I mean, look, repairing one is still fine. That's what we get in wedge formation. And wedge formation is a good card. The thing is, wedge formation can also potentially do two other things. Yes, you repair one damage from a melee character, but you also draw a card if you've got a ranged character on the battlefield and plan one if you've got a specialist on the battlefield. So played properly, it's a treble icon card that repairs one, draws one, and plans one. That's a little bit different. And I have no issue with repairing one. It's a nice little skill. I'm just saying that as a general rule, it's not, it's not phenomenal. Now, where does that leave us? It leaves us with an all right character. It's quite expensive. So that's a good but not phenomenal. One of the skills I really like. One of the skills I don't love so much. But here's the thing. And this, I think, is a secret of the character. There is nothing here that says limited to once per turn or the first time. And that's where I think we get some love here. So to go back to a character that I revealed so I have way more love than your average person for, the Megatron from Wave 2, Arrogant Ruler. Because of course the Megatron from Wave 2, when you flip to alt mode, you may play an upgrade. So you can attach a weapon... Then flick Megatron to alt mode. And then attach another weapon. And it's not a zap, it's a plasma burst. Except it's better than a plasma burst. Because plasma burst has to both go on the same character. Whereas this can go on to two separate characters. Or maybe you can start playing multiple armor. And then, I told you I'm not loving the healing one. They're repairing one. But now maybe you're repairing two. Which is the case with Medic. Or maybe, and here's... If you can build the deck, right? If you can build the deck properly. And we'll talk about that in a second. You could potentially really make some hay with Safeguard here. Now this doesn't actually have Safeguard. But the good news is... 
Now, again, you, you've got to be willing to play a mercenary on your team to do this. But if you're willing to play a mercenary on your team, you can go for a little bit of the old medic's protective field. It's an armor. When you attach it to a character, you repair one damage from it. Bearing in mind, when you attach it, you repair one damage anyway, so this actually repairs two. And it gives your character safeguard free. And what I'm thinking here is extremely simple. You give yourself safeguard free. Safeguard free says it cannot take more than three damage while undamaged. Your opponent attacks it. You take three damage. You essentially attach multiple armors. And then you're good to go. Now remember, you can only have one armor on at a time. So as much as this might work, you can play three armors and completely heal up. But you then need to leave a medic's protective field on at the end. Y you can't keep healing and then leave a different armor on because if you leave a different armor on you run into the issues of well you no longer have safeguard free having said that you've got force field and between force field and that you basically should never be taking more than three or four damage and if you play an armor heavy enough deck you could potentially never be KO'd you could make this character pseudo-invincible. Now, very much worth pointing out, Safeguard Free only works if you're undamaged. So if your opponent uses any kind of cheeky damage, something like a marksmanship, for instance, then they would be able to do as much damage as they liked. Force Field works whether you're undamaged or not. And even though I'm not saying the stats are phenomenal for the cost, I very much am saying that 14 health is good. We expect 12 on an 8 cost, but 14 health is still pretty good. It means you're going to be able to take a couple of hits. And I think that's where Roadbuster really comes in here. I think if you want to make the most of this character, you need to be playing a very upgrade heavy deck. And then just attaching as many upgrades as you can. Now I've already mentioned Megatron as an option here. Very much worth pointing out, Megatron is a 10-star character, which means if you combine it with this, you're already up to 21 stars. Doesn't mean you can't, but it does mean that after that, your options are fairly limited. Of course, we've got new designs back in Wave 1 that just lets you play an upgrade. It's literally just an action card that lets you play an upgrade, so that, that could work quite nicely. We've got Private Flak. Now, crucially, Private Flak is a 5-star, which means you cannot make a free-wide deck with Megatron in this, Boo, Hiss, etc. But it has got a tap skill in bot mode, whereby you scrap a card from your hand with an orange icon, and then you may play an upgrade. It is new designs, but as a tap skill. And we, we've seen this. The tap skills on Micromasters tend to be just battle cards reprinted as this. You could go for a little bit of the old Sergeant Springer. Now, Sergeant Springer is a little awkward, but when you're in bot mode and you've got seven or more cards in hand, you may play an action and an upgrade. Also, you're going to be playing an upgrade heavy deck. So being able to flip to alt mode two, scrapping an upgrade from your hand and then drawing two cards, that's actually going to be kind of useful. Okay. So that's quite nice. As a side note, Swindle does technically also let you play extra upgrades, but it only works if you began the game with only Decepticon characters. Might I suggest not the best use for this particular character. But the thing is, I've not even told you about the stratagem yet, and the stratagem's good. Weapons cash costs one star. Your deck can have up to one extra star of weapons and up to one extra star of armors. Now, it's not really quite as good as it sounds, and we had the same argument with Night Racer when we had a chat yesterday, probably yesterday, depends on when these all got uploaded, but you get two extra stars, but you're paying one star to get two extra stars, so you're only really getting one extra star, but it basically means that you can now have an extra star of weapons and armors. You can play more weapons and armors and, and just really go for it in terms of the star cost here and that's awesome because some of these have been really good now if we start off with weapons we've got two options one is one that i reveal so i've always got a little bit more love towards it mounted missiles gives you plus two attack 
and it's got a double orange icon. Great if you're going for a very aggressive deck. But the thing that really sells it in this deck, it can be put in an armor or a utility slot. Which means you can play this as a weapon, and it is a weapon. Even if you play it in an armor or utility slot, it's still a weapon. So you get to do the damage... But you don't have to knock off the weapon that was there before. And then you've got basically 6 attack. That goes up to 8 attack with this. Or you flip it and it's a double orange icon. And you still get to play another weapon as well. That's pretty awesome. The other option we've got here is Indestructible Sword. It again gives you plus 2 attack. It gives you 2 black icons. Which is fine. If you're going for Pierce. But again, it works uniquely well in this particular deck. Because when it is scrapped from a character, you return it to your hand. So what this basically allows you to do, and I adore this, is you attach it, and then you bounce it to your hand when you attach another weapon. Oh, but now I've got a weapon ready to attach. It basically means that you can try and make sure, at least... That you've always got a weapon in hand, ready to attach. And if you can get two of these in hand, you can essentially always have a weapon when you want to attach it. Anytime you want to attach a weapon, you will have a weapon in hand. Because you attach one and bounce the other to your hand, and then attach it and bounce, attach and bounce, attach and bounce, etc. That's kind of amazing. Moving into armor, we again have two options, and again, they are parallels of what we've already seen. Energized Field is a double blue icon card that gives you plus one defense. And while the upgraded character defends and you flip at least one orange icon, do one damage to the attacker. Now, bearing in mind, we've already got a little bit of cheeky damage going on with this character in bot mode anyway. This one could be fun. If you're playing an orange deck, this can be good for cheeky damage. If you're playing a blue deck, it's a double blue icon card. And just to be clear, right, if you're playing a super heavy blue or orange deck, that is, to some degree, going to help you decide which of these you actually want to play. Now, Blast Suit is an armor that doesn't even have a battle icon, even though it costs a star. But if you would take damage... Then you take half that damage rounded down and scrap the card. Now, if you're going for what I was saying earlier, which is basically, hey, I've got safeguard and I've got force field and I'm doing a bunch of healing. Well, now with this as well, that's another option you've got to basically try and make sure you're not one hit KO'd. And if you're playing a bunch of healing... And you're not getting one hit KO'd. That, that seems like it's going to work out pretty gosh darn well, if I'm honest with you. That seems like it's going to work. So, all in all, there's a lot to love about this character. The stats are fine. It's quite expensive. But you can essentially play a super heavy upgrade deck. Cheat yourself an extra star. And be doing a whole bunch of cheeky damage and or a whole bunch of healing and at that stage we've got a lot that we can hang our hat on here so i'm kind of excited but i'd quite like to know how excited you are so let me know in the comment section go nuts be nice and then make sure you like this video subscribe to this channel and follow me on twitter at the wussy where we talk transformers and a whole bunch of other games and do please consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time would you thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching Wassy plays.